B Monster Laboratory here. Today we're going to see how to set up the SparkFun MP3 Player Shield for your Arduino. This board is sold alone. It does not come with the through headers. So you'll have to buy the through header and we'll solder those on. We will set up the SD card, install the libraries for Arduino IDE, and test it out with a, one of the example codes. Let's begin. This is exactly what you receive if you order it online. I purchased this for about $27 on Amazon. I'll be using the SparkFun Redboard, which is their version of the Arduino Uno. This shield was designed for the Arduino Uno, but you can use it on the Arduino Mega if you reroute some of the pins. There is some light soldering involved. It's nothing too difficult. We're going to go ahead and put the headers on here and prepare it for soldering. Now the headers are all in. I'm just going to turn it upside down and set it on my mat here. You might want to use something to hold it in place while you're soldering. Here I'm going to solder one pin to each of the four sections, then turn it over and check it make sure everything's straight before I solder the rest. Well, it's not perfect, but the pins are straight and everything is flush with the board and the contacts look good, so we're ready to go. After you've soldered all the pins on your shield, you can look at the hardware version right here. This is hardware version 1.5. It shows up as V15. This is the newer version. You may have the older version, which is 4111. And if you do have that older version, SparkFun still has that tutorial link on their website, which I'll link in the description below. I'll flip it over to the other side and take a look at this. If you're wanting to add components to your shield, there are a couple pins that you cannot use because the shield uses those pins. And there are a few pins that you can use that are free, including the D5 and D10 pins, which are both PWM pins, and up here the, the RX and TX pins at position 0 and 1. Also, you can use any of the five analog pins, 0 through 5. Pins 11, 12, and 13 are the SPI data and clock pins and can only be used to connect SPI components. There are a few things to point out about this shield. There's a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, the micro SD card uh, holder. These spots here are where you can solder your audio output. Over here you've got the Arduino reset button and you've got ground and 5 volt power provided by the Arduino right here. And up here you have a power indicator light. This MP3 shield was designed to fit on top of a Arduino Uno. And uh, today we'll be using the SparkFun Redboard. We'll just line that up and put the pins in. Hopefully your soldering is straight. And it should fit right on top, just like that. The next thing we're going to do is set up our SD card, which will go right here. What I'm using is a 32 gigabyte SD card. That is way more than I'll need, but uh, it's available, so that's what I'm going to use. But I've already got one open right here, and we'll just go ahead and make sure that it's formatted for FAT16 or FAT32. I think most of them are formatted uh, for FAT32. And we'll check the format by using the, the uh, SD card reader. It's probably the cheapest one Amazon had at the time. I don't know that it really matters what kind you have. This one's a U Green reader. Make sure the card is in the adapter here. And then we'll stick this right in the SD slot, uh, the SD reader. And then I'll plug that into the computer. As soon as you plug it in, it'll pop up with the uh, MP3 file right here. I've got a couple of things in here. I don't know what they are. But you come down here, and mine is on the J drive. And I'll right click on it, format. It is uh, default is FAT32. FAT16 uh, is fine as well. We'll go ahead and click uh, Format, hit Start, Warning, and then Formatted is complete. So now we're good to go. So after we formatted the SD card, I went to the audio library on YouTube to put some MP3s on my SD card. And I just downloaded the first ones that came up here. And we'll put those down here. We're just going to drag over here, put on our SD card. Then we're going to rename it. Now the SD FAT library requires an 8.3 format, meaning there's 8 characters, a dot, and then 3 characters in the file name. 
So we put this one on here, it says Dusty Rhymes. We'll go to rename it. And we'll rename it track001.mp3. So that is 8.3. That is the format for the SD Fat library. And we'll do all of our songs that way. The second song will be, let's rename it here. Get rid of that MP3. We'll call this one two. The next one will be three, four, five, six, and so on. Now we've got all six of our songs loaded onto the SD card and named appropriately. Now that I've unplugged it from the computer and removed it from the adapter and put it right into my MP3 shield. So we do need the SFE MP3 shield library as well as the SD fat library. So I'll come over here to code and we will download the zip file. Once the, down, once the zip file is downloaded, put it on our desktop. And we'll extract it. And we'll put it in our Arduino libraries right there. Select folder, extract. I extracted the zip file into the libraries folder, which is in Arduino and in documents for me. And then once you shut it out and go back in, you'll see it's here. And once we shut this out and then open up Arduino, we can see that the examples are ready for us. Right here. Now I've got everything set up, including the libraries for Arduino IDE. So now it's time to test it out. Just use an example code. So I'll plug my board in. And I'm going to plug in my 9 volt power. And lastly, I'll plug in my audio jack. I'm here in Arduino IDE. I'm going to go up here to some example code. And it's under SFEMP3 Shield, MP3 Shield Library Demo. Oh, I don't have this. I don't think. I'm going to search for Freestack in the Library Manager. Searching the Library Manager for Freestack, it came up with VS1053 for use with SD Fat. I'm going to go ahead and download it. At this point, I'm having a little bit of issue with trying to upload it to my board. Best thing to do is just shut down your Arduino IDE and reboot it. Took a little bit of time, but we got there. Here we see the instructions, the sketch listens to commands for the serial terminal, and if it sees uh, numbers 1 through 9, it will play them. Uh, for instance, if you press a number 2 in the serial monitor, it'll play track number 2. And remember that is how we labeled our MP3s back when we were installing those on our SD card. So let's go up here, 
Once you set your serial monitor to 115-200 baud, you can get some different commands on here. You uh, play 1 through 9, we'll play tracks, and S will stop it. And uh, some other ones, you come down here, you can increment you can increment bass frequency by 10 hertz by pressing B. And C will uh, raise the bass amplitude by 1 decibel. So let's type in a, a 1. And I can get it pretty loud. And we'll hit S to stop and do three because we already did two. Stop. Let's do six. Just. Now we're going to try out a different example code. We'll go up here to File, go to Examples, come down here to Simp 3 Shield, Examples. We're going to do MP3 Button Player 2. With this one, we'll have to create some buttons on a breadboard to operate the music. As you can see, I have everything plugged into my Shield and my Arduino. And here you see four buttons. This set is not being used. So I have three buttons. This one's Play, Stop, and continue and you'll see they're connected to a resistor as well this is a 10k pull down resistor and the buttons are connected to a 0 a 1 and a 2 and then this wire right here is connected to ground over here on the shield and I will include this schematic in the video as well now if I press 1 it'll play the song that I downloaded off of the uh, YouTube library so this will play track 1 That stop. This is resume. And I guess it plays the track over, but uh, this is resume. Track two. Track three. And you can put as many, I guess, as your card can hold on it. I've got a 32 gigabyte SD card here, so I've put quite a few songs on other SD cards. There are three push buttons on the breadboard. One leg of the push button is connected to a ground rail. The other leg of the push button is connected to a 10K resistor, which is connected to one of the analog pins, 0, 1, or 2. Well, that's all I've got for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like it by giving it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you again very soon.